Good evening. I'd like to call to order uh, a regular meeting of the Board of Education of the Goshen Central School District tonight, Monday, September 20th, 2021. Tonight's meeting is being held in the District Administration Building and live streamed through YouTube. Next on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of meditation. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next on the agenda is privilege of the floor. First on the agenda is William Green. Hello, everybody. Uh, I come to the board wearing many different hats this evening. I come as an educator, a parent, a taxpayer, and as a community member. My purpose for speaking tonight is to respectfully request that the current part-time Point eight general music chorus teaching position be changed to a full-time tenure track position. First of all, and foremost, the Goshen School District is an amazing district to work for and be a part of. More specifically, the K-12 music department as a whole continues to build an outstanding program. We are all well supported by our building principals, the faculty, and by many community members. We have worked hard to maintain rigor and excellence within our programs while keeping it fun for our budding musicians. Goshen has also been nationally recognized as one of the top communities for music education for the past five years in a row. Also consistently sending students to all county, area all state, and all state concerts. We have been able to do this through a huge amount of research, practice, and teamwork, and by having an experienced music department. But you don't have to take my word for it. I have plenty of data since I know all of you love that. Currently, Kim Longo, the high school band director, has been in this district for 23 years and is also a Goshen graduate. Both Kristen Callahan and I are in our 17th year with the district. I'm also a proud Goshen grad, while Mrs. Callahan is not as lucky. Mrs. Diaz, Martha Diaz, is completing her 16th year with the district, while Kristen Scully, another Goshen grad, has been at the high school for the past nine years and Pam Murphy has been with Goshen for the past seven. Also to name some past retirees, Ellen Dickinson and Casey Hewlett were also with this district for over 20 years, while Lenny Mumbauer and Wayne McNaughton both taught here for 25 plus years. Collectively, that's more than 180 years of musical experience shared with our Goshen children. But this brings me back to the reason I am here. Although there's been a great deal of consistency to build upon our music program, there's one place that this falls short, and that is with the current .8 general music chorus position at GIS. Because this is currently a part-time, non-tenure track position, we have lost some truly gifted educators to other districts offering full-time positions. In fact, our district will be currently searching for yet another new music teacher to fill this position. Sadly, we are losing a highly qualified person in Tina Wildrick, yet another Goshen grad, as she is leaving Goshen for a full-time tenure track position with another district. With her departure, this new hire will be the seventh teacher to fill this position in under 10 years. This also leaves a performance opportunity gap in the third grade. At Scotchtown, there is kindergarten festival, a first grade concert, and a second grade moving up ceremony performance. At GIS, there is fourth and fifth grade chorus and this continues for all remaining grades 6 through 12. The only grade that does not currently have any performance opportunity is third grade. This could easily be rectified by adding point 0.2 to the current point 0.8 position. In addition, because the current point 0.8 position already includes health insurance benefits, the additional point 0.2 cost would be relatively minimal. What the children need now, more than ever, is consistency. Changing the current point eight part-time non-tenure track position to a full-time position will attract a plethora of quality musicians. This will no doubt help us hire and retain a cream of the crop music educator, 
so that all of our children receive a highly engaging and consistent musical education with performance opportunities at every level. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Would you like to submit that? Sure. Next on the floor is Stacy, and I just because of the handwriting, is it? Oh, structure. Okay, thank you. I'm not. I'm not as prepared as Estella, <laughs> so I really am not. Okay. So I have a little guy in first grade, and I had saw on the email that they were going to do basal testing for the students. So I have some concerns about that. Who does it? How often? Why? I, I didn't know if that was. Accurate, if somebody can please explain that to me. Well. So, so I don't know what email you're referring to. Uh, in the video that I sent out on September 2nd under the New York State Department of Health, the governor has directed that it be available to students. It would not be done without a consent of a parent. It is not a mandate. It would not be happening every week. It only has to be availability. The district is ser currently searching for a provider just like every other district in New York State and in the county as well. As of yet, we do not have a provider. We do not have a provider that can handle the volume that could potentially be coming our way. So as of, as of now, the district's understanding is that it only needs to be made available. It will not be a mandate. It will not be happening every week. And it certainly would not be happening without parent consent. OK. Because I just need clarification sure. for that, because it was unclear. The way the little box was in the email when you were speaking, it just looked like, you know, for K through 12, but it didn't go into the, the who's and the what's. And yep. okay. okay. Thank you. Next on privilege of the floor is Kevin. Is it is it Roche? Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you again for your time. Uh, it's my second time here. I uh, came last uh, last meeting. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, thank the, I believe, the assistant principal from my daughter's high school. We had, we had a 30-minute conversation, and it was a very good conversation. He explained a lot of things, and I felt a lot of comfort in the fact that he was giving me uh, facts and putting me at ease that what was, was, being, was being taught is critical thinking, and, and the reason why we went with that particular uh, uh, new voices was the fact that it's it's... it's a lot of the, the, the books and the learning material is PDF style. So it's easily accessible and it's, it's better to, so every child could have it. So I, I appreciate the phone call, it was wonderful and I, I feel good, but at the same time again, I, uh, one thing I learned in the military is you, you, you trust but verify. So I'm gonna be constantly uh, keeping up with the uh, curriculum, making sure that everything is what I like, uh, like classical liberalism, I think it's a beautiful thing. Now, uh, the second thing is about the testing. I, uh, I'm uh, very glad that you uh, made that statement clarifying, but uh, what I would like to uh, submit, if possible, is I have a couple of studies here. If we could uh, maybe just uh, pool our resources to uh, children or the older kids who are more susceptible. I have three studies here, and they all state that children 10 and under have a super low transmi uh, transmissibility. So they have a very, very low rate of trans uh, transmitting the virus. So uh, with that being said, I, I would think it's, they say that when it comes to high school students, transmissibility is, is more. Uh, why? They don't know. It could be because they're more active with each other. Uh, it could be what they do outside of schooling. But uh, what, what I would like is we could uh, find a way to pool our resources and then look after our teachers, our, our school staff, and our older kids. Because uh, with, the, with the younger kids, K through two, under age of 10, very, very low transmissibility. And also, like I stated the last time, the rate of survivability for children 18 and under, 18 years of age and under is 99.997. Thank you. Thank you. And next on for the list of four is Diane Kovac. Good evening, and thank you for having me have a chance to speak. As some of you know, I was here um, for the last meeting on September 2nd. I would like to know if there's been any resolution or offer for me for my son with transportation, since I've not heard from anyone. 
I can say at this time, if you just be a little patient, we do have our director of transportation here this evening to present. Um, so, you know, maybe perhaps most of your questions will be answered. Will there be a second for the floor? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so then I shall wait until then. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Great. Olson. You're welcome. Next on the agenda is the President's report. Uh, President Pucci is not here this evening, so we will be deferring that until the next meeting. Next on the agenda is the legislative update. Shannon Johnson. We don't have anything at this moment. Um, we have another meeting coming up the first week of October, so after that point I'll have an update. Okay. okay. Out of curiosity, did I say what the agenda would be for that? Um, I didn't see the agenda yet, just the date and time of the meeting. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And next on the agenda is the superintendent's report, Dr. Curtis Coates. Thank you very much. So taking uh, explanation of testing and vaccination one step further. So on September 2nd, Governor Hochul made an announcement that it was a requirement that all staff and students be tested on a weekly basis. The only opt out for that uh, for relief from that mandate would be for someone to willingly submit proof of vaccination. For our staff members, we have begun the data collection process. We've done so in paper, so it is secure. Nothing is transmitted over the internet. Our director of personnel has been traveling to the departments and to the schools to begin that data collection process so that we know potentially how many staff would we have to be testing on a weekly basis. For our students, as I said a moment ago, that is only availability for students and for families if a family so chooses to ask the school for support for testing. For our staff, it would be considered mandatory. As I said a few moments ago, as of now, we do not have a provider that would be able to help us with that. But we are continuing to work in the direction of being able to meet that requirement. I'm going to ask Ms. Karen Wells just to come forward to address some of the work that we've been putting forth to try to address some of the transportation issues that we've been experiencing along with many other districts. We have some intermediary solutions that she's going to explain and we'll continue to work through some of the challenges that I know we'll still face. So Ms. Wells? Good evening everybody. Okay, no surprise, we have a driver shortage like everybody else. It's a nationwide problem. Um, to start off the school year, we've had six drivers down. We have one new school that we have to go to this year. We cover nine open runs daily, and that does not include call outs. We have three drivers out on a medical leave. We are combining runs every day in order to get the students where they need to go. We have office staff and our mechanics driving daily. Uh, we cover sports trips. We only have one trip driver this year but we're doing the best we can with sports trips, so we're shuttling all the local schools that we can, by however means we need to get them there, and then we have regular drivers after their runs go to retrieve those students and bring them back home. Uh, we're currently advertising that we do need drivers. We are looking for ways to attract new candidates. We are willing to train drivers. Anybody want to have a CDL? <laughs> well, on application. Um, we were, uh, Dr. Coates and I were discussing different ways that we may be able to uh, pool resources to get more people to come in throughout the district, not just drivers. Um, and we were having a situation with the Burke and St. John's run. Um, effective Wednesday, they will have a dedicated PM bus so that there will not be any issues with that, those students anymore. And we did that by contracting other services from within the district, we were able to push some pieces together. It, it's not optimal, but we just don't have enough bodies. So no changes to the AM, but the PM, we're going to have a dedicated run that will handle both Burke and St. John's. Correct, so that those students do not have to transfer. I know that they were waiting quite a while on the buses, and uh, it's not ideal, but it was what we had to do to get it to start. But since we were able to consolidate the other rooms, they are able to dedicate one bus to them. Thank you. And then uh, I also finally wanted to share with the board tonight uh, where our current homeschooling numbers stand. And I want to thank Maureen for uh, combining all the data for me to be able to report. Going back all the way to 2018, 2019, pre-pandemic, 
uh, we saw a total of 25 students from 14 different families in homeschooling. We did see an increase in 2000, the beginning of 2019, 2020, but that was largely in part due to the changes in law from vaccination requirements at that point. And we jumped up to 38 students with 26 families. That number is steadily in increased up until the data that we currently have. We are currently at a level of 68 students with 40 families. Again, it's just a benchmark for the board to be aware of. I've reached out to some of my colleagues in the area. Our numbers are not outlandish compared to others. A couple of colleagues that I spoke to, their numbers were higher, some were a little bit lower. I think we're right in the middle of the pack. I think many of the families that have communicated with Mrs. Farrell would indicate that once they feel more confident uh, towards the end of the pandemic, that it would be their intent for the children to return. However, some families just thought another year at home would be most beneficial for, the, for their family. And we are here to support families in that choice right now. I know it's a difficult choice, but I just wanted the board to be aware of where our numbers stood today. I also, on a side note, wanted the board to know, not to embarrass you, but Maureen is the point of contact for homeschooling. So there's been an uptick in cases, so she's been coordinating all that. And I, you know, so thank you for that. Good job. Next on the agenda is the assistant superintendent. Okay. Next on the agenda is the assistant superintendent for business report, who is not here this evening. Next on the agenda is the assistant superintendent for curriculum, instruction, personnel, and techno technology report, Mr. Jason Carter. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. Uh, just a couple of quick updates for you. I'd like to say thank you to all of our building level administrators. Um, We've been running our AIS parent orientation meetings just before all of our parent orientations at the buildings. Uh, everything has been well attended, a lot of hard work in preparing. And this is really uh, a part of our, our title grants and the requirements uh, as part of collaboration with stakeholder groups. So this informative uh, meeting that we hold really explains our Title I program uh, to all the parents, not just those that have children um, taking classes or, or academic, receiving academic intervention services. So just to go through dates quickly, grade six, uh, September 9th, grade seven and eight was on the 14th, moving into GIS on the 21st, GHS on the 23rd, and Scottsdale Avenue School on September 29th. So once again, thank you to our building level administrators, and we hope to see you all there. Just wanted to quickly mention uh, that we are currently working through the American Rescue Plan Act um, as far as the ARP ESSER Part 2. So Dr. Coates and I are putting together the application um, and really taking a, a deep look at where we want uh, to put our monies. However, none of that will be submitted until we go through another stakeholder collaboration meeting, which we are currently in the process of setting up. Uh, so we will send out invites to a large amount of people representing all major stakeholder groups so that we can discuss the funding that we potentially receive and where we would like to spend that money with proper feedback from our community. So keep an eye open uh, for the invite. I think some important pieces that I had written here prior to our meeting this evening, just, just to be aware of 20% of the overall fund is really to uh, address learning loss and a large part of that was um, the Gladiator Games program that we established for this summer. And hopefully we'll have enough funds left over to move forward because we do have a few years uh, before we have to uh, spend all the monies in the fund. Finally, I just want to mention that Kindness Week is starting at SAS, GIS, um, and the middle school actually started today. Uh, this is a great opportunity for our students to take part in activities that really build that school culture based around kind acts. Um, we believe that this, coupled with many of the things that we're doing uh, at our high school, middle school, and our elementary schools, will build a strong community and help our children to really go through a smooth transition as we re-enter. I think it's been a great September. I think the upstart has been very successful for us. We've got a lot of steam, and now we just want to continue to build and maintain uh, and continue to assist our children as needed. Uh, so we're quite pleased with what we have going on in the buildings, and I think Kindness Week it's a wonderful week for us to just have fun together with great activities and continue to build that community. And that is it for me this evening. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next on the agenda is the assistant agenda. 
Can I have a motion for the consent agenda as presented? Jeremy and Shannon. Be it resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Board of Education approves the consent agenda as presented. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Next on the agenda is old business. There is no old business. Next item, new business. I need a motion to approve minutes for the regular meeting. <coughs> Tom, Shannon. Be it resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Board of Education approves the minutes for the September 8th, 2021 regular board meeting. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Sorry. Next item, approve. I need a motion to approve the increase in adult lunch prices for the 2021-2022 school year. I skipped one. One, two. Gosh, sorry, guys. Doing great. I don't do this all the time. I need a motion to ratify the appointment of an impartial hearing officer. Jeremy and Shannon. Be it resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Board of Education ratifies the appointment of impartial hearing officer Michael, is it Lanson? Esquire for file number 092021. Compensation will be made at the hourly rates currently approved by the State Education Department pursuant to 200.21 of the regulations of the commissioner. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay, next one. Motion to approve the increase in adult lunch prices. Tom and Billy. Be it resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Board of Education approves the increase in adult lunch prices from $4.50 plus tax to $4.86 plus tax effective for the 2021-2022 school year. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Next item, 11.4. I need a motion to approve the contract with the Goshen Football Touch Touchdown Club. Shannon and Billy. Be it resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Board of Education enters into an agreement with Goshen Football Touchdown Club to provide football chain crew, three adults, at the rate of $76.25 per person per game for a total not to exceed $3,000. $202.50, exclusive of playoff games for the fall 2021-2022 football season. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Next item, 11.5. I need a motion to approve lead evaluators for teacher certifications. Tom and Shannon. Be it resolved that pursuant to the requirements of Education Law Section 3012-D and Part 30-2.9 of the Regents' Rules, the following people have completed all of the required training to be recertified by this Board of Education as lead evaluators for classroom teachers. <coughs> Henry Friedman, Jennifer Martin, Heather Carmen, Nancy Misick, Robert Syracuse, Sarah Jabbar, Matthew Wentworth, Alyssa Marino, Heather Hendershot. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Eleven point six. I need a motion to approve cross contract with PNW BOCES for super about. Jenna and Billy. Be it resolved upon the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, the Board of Education approves the cross contract with Putnam Northern Westchester BOCES to provide the Super Eval online leadership evaluation tool to the Goshen School District for the 2021-2022 school year, according to the following terms. Super Eval platform fee, $2,178. Super Eval one-time setup fee, $165. Be it further resolved, the Board of Education authorizes the Superintendent of Schools to execute the cross contract. All those in favor? Aye. 
Opposed? The next item is just info, information, or up for discussion. Um, the policy committee met last week and had a first reading of the uh, following policies. All of those policies are available to view on board docs. Any questions about any of those? Next item is privilege of report. While I appreciate Ms. Wells saying that the dedicated bus for the afternoon will be starting on Wednesday, uh, eliminating the transfer bus, I'd like to know when that was discussed because why wouldn't something want to be done for the AM one as well? My son still sits on the bus for 35 to 40 minutes in the morning. We have app, sorry. Oh, no, we would absolutely look into every possible avenue that we could to staff another bus. It simply boils down to the buses that drive for both St. John's and Burke come from other runs from inside the district. We just simply don't have another employee to operate another bus, and we can't cut down our morning runs anymore. We need another person to come in the door to be able to add another bus. We physically have the, the buses on site. We need another driver. What if we tried alternative means of transportation, getting a service to come in and So qu quality, which is the main con, quality transport, they can't staff their own runs. Actually, over the summer, they pleaded hardship for the, um, they have an obligation with the county for summer services for special education students. They couldn't fulfill their own runs. This year, they actually have many of our special education out of district runs, and there have been times where they have not picked up those students. They are in, I hate to say it, worse condition than we are in district. There's no other means that we could try to figure out, uh, you know, a private company, per se? Private, com private companies are in worse shape than the school districts right now. Our best avenue is try, try to recruit new drivers, which is what we're trying to do right now. I guess I think this is extremely unfair. If it was your guys' kids, I think you'd be upset just as we are. I mean, my son is on the bus for four minutes in the morning. And, and I, I don't disagree with you at all. And that's why we're going to continue to pursue new employment with new drivers. We put out a, a weekly update to attract new drivers. We get two phone calls of which the transportation department's already spoken with them. We're going to try to do an open house for transportation this upcoming weekend. We're going to do anything we can to get new people in. We're going to look and exhaust every resource. The issue is it's not just Goshen battling this issue. It's Pine Bush, it's Washingtonville, it's every company. The governor actually made a staff statement on this that she's going to try to reach out to every licensed CDL driver in the state to encourage them to come to apply to school districts if they have the driver endorsement. I, I don't want you to think this is falling on deaf ears. I agree, if it was my child taking the bus, I, I absolutely would be upset. We need the drivers to operate these buses and that's where our focus needs to be to work on this. Can I ask, why, why didn't I get a phone call? In terms of? of what this resolution was. Got Mr. Pucci asked last week, and I, he told me that I was going to get a phone call. I had to come tonight to hear it. Because I literally had to cut the other bus as of this morning to be able to make this decision. It wasn't, it you wasn't. You called me after that. Understood, but it wasn't like I had another resource to add to it, and it was not an easy decision to be able to cut that other run to add to this. All I'm saying is I could have gotten a phone call. Understood. That's the problem that I had the last time. This is the reason why I pulled my kid out of the Goshen School District because we were ignored. It's a horrible feeling when you feel that you are ignored. A, a phone call just to say I'm following up on this could have been done. Understood. I think that we should have given that, been given that courtesy. So I'm, I'm hoping that I will hear something in the near future then. Could I ask that again? Could I get a follow-up call so that if something does happen, as I to know about this? As soon as we have new employment, we have new drivers that we can staff to run, I will make sure that the calls go out, yes. And I would love to get a personal phone call. I really would, because this is extremely upsetting. And I know that I'm not the only parent or that we're the only district with the problem. The problem is everywhere. But when the problem then becomes my child's problem, I have to then speak up. That's why I'm here. I can't have my kid have this problem. You know, it's, it's unfair. It really is. 
So I appreciate, you know, the PM done, but I, I do hope that we come to a resolution for the AM very shortly. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is item 13, board member issues. Next item is the executive session. We have a motion to go into executive session uh, with the intent to reconvene. Tom and Jeremy. Be it resolved, the Board of Education will enter into executive session with the intent to reconvene the business portion of the meeting for discussions related to an impartial hearing and the review of the employment history of particular persons. All in favor? Aye. Opposed?
welcome back. I'd like to reconvene the business portion of the uh, Board of Education meeting. We have another resolution, 15.1. I need a motion to approve the appointment of Interim Assistant Superintendent for Business. Tom and Jeremy. Be it resolved that the Board hereby appoints Richard Linden to serve on a contractual, non-tenure, bearing basis as Interim Assistant Superintendent for Business, effective, when is the effective date? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. So effective Tuesday, September 21st, 2021, at a salary of $1,000 per diem. Be it resolved upon the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, the Board of Education appoints Richard Linden, Interim Assistant Superintendent for Business, as follows. Bid designee to open bids, purchasing agent. Be it further resolved, the Board of Education authorizes the Board of Education President to execute the agreement between the Goshen Central School District and the Interim Assistant Superintendent for Business. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. And next on the uh, agenda is 16. I need a motion to close the meeting. Shannon, Billy? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. Thank you, everyone. Have a good evening.